Hello, and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blog cast. This is episode 104, and I am doing this one slightly out of order um, only because... Uh, I have a sense of what song I can put here at the end, and that song is already recorded and ready to go. And uh, the other, the blog that that is kind of before this in terms of order of publication, I have still, like, no idea what song I want to put with it. Um, So if you've read the TV folks making what is it called? TV folks, uncomfortable, uncomfortable TV. I don't even remember what it's called, but if you read the one about people on television, uh, and you have an idea for a song that would go well with it, please tell me because I, I, I don't know. I, I just, yeah, don't know. Um, so yeah, um, I am reached, I have reached the end of my re-recording of my lullabies and, and the new lullabies and such. So, so now, uh, you know, I'm going to need to, to pull out some more tunes. Um, so if there's a song you've always wanted to hear me sing, let me know. Um, and I might just throw that one up there or something about the, the, that, that post you have an idea about. Tell me. Uh, meanwhile, this one is called Tortoising and Herring, and here it is. The afternoon that the lullaby came to me, I was in the middle of working on a big long-term project, or rather I was preparing to continue the work on a big long-term project. But the lullaby called itself into existence, and before the day was over, I had not only written a song, but recorded it too. Most things I do are not like this. Most things are bigger, more unwieldy, the sorts of projects that can take years. But occasionally, a shorter lightning rod piece will flash through. When I got the burst of lullaby inspiration, I thought, oh, I'm a hare and my artist friend laboring over an epic work is a tortoise. Artists come in different speeds. But I very quickly realized that this was wrong. I have at least one project that I've been working on for a decade and a half, so I'm definitely not typically super fast. What I realized, though, is that an artist isn't either a tortoise or a hare. They're both. Sometimes we're the tortoise, inching along, headlights only illuminating a few feet ahead, and sometimes we're the hare, dashing ahead to a finish line in an instant. Sometimes we're both. We send one slow project along the track and then send another to quickly dash ahead. I also recognize that in the fable the hare loses, but I'm sure there are races that hare could win. I suspect a rich artistic life has a bit of both styles in it. In the midst of working through a novel, for example, it is a gift to see an entire creative process come together in an afternoon. Most artists I know have those big pieces that they chip away at slowly, like marble carved into shape, one knock of the chisel at a time. So to take a break and to do a quick sketch can be very refreshing. Simultaneously, if you're in a space of making a series of short-term projects that you can finish in a day, maybe adding a more ambitious project with multiple steps and even an invisible deadline will give you a good shift in perspective. It's not that some artists are tortoises and some are hares. It's that some projects are short races and some are long. Some ideas are hares on a quick track and others are tortoises on a marathon slowly plodding forward to an epic finish. We are not tortoises or hares. We are either tortoising or herring. The trick is knowing which is which. So that's the short one for the day. Tortoising and herring. And herring I have spelled H-A-R-E dash I-N-G, not the fish a herring, H-E-R-R-I-N-G. Um, but I feel there should be a verb form of, of being a hare uh, or a rabbit. Um, yeah, so I haven't recommended a podcast in a while, and I don't 
know that I ever have recommended these two podcasts to you before, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and it, and I'm recommending them to, as a pair because they, um, I th- because that's actually how I listen to them. Um, I think I may have m- recommended the podcast in the dark before um, during its first season, uh, and their second season I I finished a, maybe a few weeks ago. And their second season is also really fantastic. Um, it's about um, a case uh, where this this guy has been tried over and over again for 21 years, I think. Um, and he's been in prison for 21 years. And he keeps being tried again and again and again. Um, and, of course, it's a, it's a racist... Uh, sort of situation in a racist town and yeah, anyway it's a very interesting um, exploration of, of what's going on um, in this small town uh, so that one's really interesting and really like interesting good journalism I think I, I would love to run it by I have a friend who is a kind of true crime expert and I, I wonder what she would think of it and I should ask her uh, but that one I thought was was really um, good and it's very serious um, which is why it is hilarious to recommend this other podcast to you simultaneously because it's a podcast called uh, This Sounds Serious um, which is a satire of true crime podcasts um, by the same guys who do uh, Dexter Guff is smarter than you, and the this is that show. Um, they're a Canadian group, and they are very funny. Um, yeah, and this sounds serious. Is it's just spot on. Like it really. Like if you didn't pay close attention, you might think it was for real. Um, but it's so funny, and um, sometimes it would make me laugh listening to this. Listening after listening to this sounds serious, and then I would listen to In the Dark. I'd be like, "Yeah, In the Dark." <laughs> I mean, like it's really good In the Dark, but but it is very serious. Um, so what, listening to them as a pair is actually kind of delightful. Probably wrong um, in some sense, but um, I very much enjoyed both of them together. So enjoy if you have not. Um, and what I'm going to put here at the end for this song is another Spanish lullaby that I learned. Um, I, I don't think it actually is a lullaby. Like I, 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 it's a children's song for sure. I don't know that it's normally um, sung as a lullaby or a cancione de cuna, I think is the name for a lullaby in Spanish. Um, but I've turned it into a lullaby. And, and that's true for a lot of the lullabies in my little collection. They are not necessarily, they weren't necessarily born as lullabies, but you can, you know, push them in a lullaby direction with a little push. (laughs) Anyway, um, so this one, I just think it's adorable. It's just so cute. Um, and it is called Los Poitos Dicen. Um, and basically it translates to the, the, the chicks, the little chicks, the chickens, little chickens say, and then, you know, what they say is pew, 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 which is super cute. Not peep, peep, peep. I, d- I did think about uh, recording a kind of an English version, and I translated it a bit to make it, you know, kind of work. And, and it just, it, it's not as good. So I have um, added a little, uh, I've, I've sort of, I've, I've been a little free with my, my, um, recording my interpretation um basically added a couple little bits here and there um so yeah anyway now it's a little bit more lala by e than it used to be and um yeah there's like a whole extra little bit um so yeah enjoy los poitos dicen los poitos dicen pio 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 Cuando tienen hambre, cuando tienen frío, la gallina busca el maíz y el trigo, les da la comida y les presta abrigo. Pío, 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 pío. 
sus dos alas acurrucaditos duermen los pollitos hasta el otro día cuando se levantan dicen mamacita tengo mucha hambre dame el hombrecita pío 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 Los pollitos dicen pío, 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 cuando tienen hambre, cuando tienen frío. La gallina busca el maíz y el trigo, les da la comida y les presta abrigo. Sus dos alas acurrucaditos duermen los pollitos hasta otro día. Duermen los pollitos hasta otro día.